Fellowship. Praise God. Good to see everybody. Good to see everybody on this wonderful Tuesday. Wherever you are in the world, day or night, afternoon, we got all time zones represented. Argentina, Australia, England, United States, South Africa, Germany, all the places. Hello, world. Hello, world from the fellowship. Hello, everybody wave your hand. Wave your hand. Everybody wave your hand to the world. Hello, world. <laughs> Welcome to the fellowship. The mighty warriors for Christ International Fellowship come together around the world and praise and worship and love together the way it should be. The way it should be. We're in the world, but we are not of the world. We have 25 countries, 25 countries watch this channel. I don't know how many watch Golden Nuggets, but 25 countries watch this channel. So welcome to the world. If you happen to watch today, welcome everybody. Today's lesson, a great lesson today, a great lesson for all of us. I almost made it, I almost made it kingdom business. But either way, either way, it's going to be important for all of us this lesson today. Staying on God's path for your life. Today's lesson Staying on God's path for your life. Now that's that's a mouthful because sometimes we get on our path and forget we're on God's path. Let me let me say that again. <laughs> the reason staying on God's path is so hard is because sometimes we get on our path and we think that's the path to be on. We think our path is the path to be on excuse me in all my ways i acknowledge you lord and you you lord you point up everybody point up you lord will direct my path not me we cannot direct our path because we don't know what's ahead we don't know what's ahead how can we how can we <laughs> it's like it's like Oh, the Holy Spirit just gave me this message. Holy just gave me it gave, the Holy Spirit just gave me this, this this parable. Being on your path is like walking on a map, and you don't have the map in your hand. Walking in your path is going somewhere without the map in your hand. You have no idea how to get there the quickest way. You have no idea where the accidents are, where the pitfalls are, detours. You have no idea because you don't have the map in your hand. God is the map. <laughs> Let me say it again. God is the map. He knows every way to go. Which way is better? Which way is easier? Which way you don't have to fall? We get on our we get on our road. We falling. We tripping. We getting we getting caught in quicksand. We get we get all these blocks, roadblocks, accidents, because we're on our path. In all my ways, Proverbs. That's a text day. The text day. Proverbs three six. Proverbs three six. In all my ways, I acknowledge you, Lord. All my ways, I acknowledge you, Lord. And you will direct my path. All my, let's say it together. All your ways, all my ways. In all my ways, I acknowledge you, Lord. In all my ways, I acknowledge you, Lord. And you, not me, you, Lord, will direct my path. It's so easy because the flesh gets caught up in the world. And when you get caught up in the world, you get on the wrong road. Let me say it again. When you get caught up in the world, you get caught up on the wrong road. You forget what path God is taking you on. Sometimes we start complaining. How come, how come God's taking me this way? How come God's how come God making me wait? How come I'm going through this? How come my life has been hard? How come? How come? How come? Excuse me. He knows the plans he has. For whatever reason. Everyone is going through something. Everyone is going through something for a reason. Don't think God doesn't know what's happening. Don't think what you're going through in your life. God has no idea. God knows everything. God is in control of everything. Good times, hard times. God is in control of everything. He didn't leave us. He said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. I'll be with you even to the end of the age. So even when you feel like you don't know where you're going, God's with you. See, if you listen to him, even if you don't know where you're going, he's still taking you there. <laughs> even if you don't know where you're going, he is still taking you there. If you're listening, he's still guiding you. He's still protecting you. He's still blessing you on his road. On his road. Hey, Simon, when you're on God's road, he's taking you there. Whether you know how to get there or not, 
He is taking you there because the Holy Spirit is letting you know when to move, when not to move, when to turn, when not to turn, what decision to make. Don't make the decision. The Holy Spirit is talking to you about everything. He's talking to you about everything. He's guiding you every step of the way. He's guiding you every step of the way. If you're listening. If you're listening. <laughs> and how do you listen? How do you listen? Have no fear. Stand still. See, we don't like the unknown. The flesh does not like the unknown. So when there's change in your life, the flesh doesn't like it. I don't. I don't want to change. I don't. I, I want to stay where I am. I. I don't want to be. I don't want to go to a new place. I don't want to go to a new job. I don't want to move. I don't want to move. I like it here. The flesh doesn't like change. The flesh doesn't like change. Now God may try to tell you, move here, move there. And a blessing is waiting for you when you move. But you say, no, I don't like to move. I don't have any friends there. I don't know. I don't need people there. I got to start over. I don't know if I want to go there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? God knows. If you say, I don't know how I'm going to make it, you're talking, not God. When you say, I don't know how I'm going to make it, that's you talking. But when we say with God, all things are possible, you know he's going to be there. Wherever you're going, God's going to be waiting for you. You'll never be alone. You're not going to be alone. Whatever the change is, you're not going to be alone. God is there waiting for you at the new change, the new change, location, job, relationship. Whatever the change is, God is waiting for you to make the change. So when we get caught up in, well, I don't know about that. I don't know about that move. I don't know about that change. Uh, I don't know about that. I don't know. Uh, is this right? Is this right or not? The way to know if it's right, go into prayer. The way to know if it's right or not is to stand still in prayer. Give it to the Lord in prayer. Whenever you have a decision, give it to the Lord in prayer and let, let the Holy Spirit reveal to you what to do, what decision to make, when to make it. Hey, Claudette, when to make it. How to make it. The Holy Spirit will guide you in every step. Don't get ahead of the Holy Spirit. Let me say it again. Don't get ahead of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit didn't say anything, wait. If the Holy Spirit didn't say anything, wait. Those who what? Those who wait on the Lord, what? Gain strength. The Lord may be saying, not now, not yet. You're praying for change. You're waiting for a decision. But God said, not yet. Maybe he said no. See, you have to pray for that. Is, is God's silence when you pray and it seems like God didn't answer? God did answer. Either it's not yet or no. Now, how do you know if it's not yet or no? Wait the Lord. Wait on the Lord for that. He'll even tell you that. You may get to the point you're ready to make the move. You're ready to make the change. And you're trying to say, now, God hasn't said anything yet. I've been praying for a long time. God hadn't answered. Yes, God did answer. What you have to determine is God saying, not yet or no. See, when God says it's the wrong place, his, his silence is no. When when God says not yet, it means your blessing is being set up. When God says not yet, it means your blessing is being set up in his perfect timing. If you rush to it, you get there before the timing. But when you wait on the Lord to say move, you'll get there right on time. And the blessing will be waiting for you because you waited on the Lord to let you know when to make the move, when to change, how to change. We cannot get ahead of the Holy Spirit. When you're walking on God's path, let the Holy Spirit guide you every step of the way. Don't rush. It doesn't matter how anxious you are. Don't rush. The Holy Spirit will tell you when to move, who to call, how to call, what to say, everything. But with the flesh, we get anxious. And when you get anxious, you start rushing. 
and you don't wait, Lord, because you're anxious. You, you want to make it happen faster. But everything happens in God's time. Everything happens in God's time. Hey, Carl. So we got to remember, it's not our clock. We are not on our clock. We're on God's clock. His clock is different than our clock. His ways are above our ways. His thoughts above our thoughts. As far as the heavens are above the earth. His ways are above our ways. His thoughts above our thoughts. Isaiah 55, 8, 9. Isaiah 55, 8, 9. His thoughts are above our thoughts. So when you don't know how you're going to do something, or you don't know how you're going to get there, God knows. God already knows. And God knows exactly how he's going to take you there. Now sometimes, sometimes God's direction to us doesn't make sense. Let me say it again. Sometimes God's directions to us, to us, doesn't make sense. Because it's beyond our comprehension. He's taking us in a direction that he knows is going to get there. And we go, well, I've never done that before. I've never been over there before. And, and God didn't ask you a question. He says, go over there first, and then go over here second, and then go there third. And then you're going, well, why do I do that? Because God said so. <laughs> it's very simple. If God says move right and left and then straight, don't you say, well, how come I can't go straight? And you go straight, you hit by a car. Because God said go right, go left, and then straight, and you just go straight. Your way. See, when you go your way, when you go your way, it's being hard-headed, and you don't see the obstacles. The reason that God said go right and left and straight, you went around something, a block. You went out, you went around a mountain and a bad an accident, and then you went straight because he took you around the struggle. He took you around the pitfall. He took you around the accident waiting to happen if you went straight on your on your decision. That's why it says, in all my ways, I acknowledge you, Lord, and you will direct my path. Because you know where I'm going, and you know what's in my way. You know what pitfalls are ahead. You know what backstabbers are ahead. What cheaters and liars and haters. You know all that, where they are, and who they are, and when they are. He knows all that. And when we stay on his road, he takes us around all the unnecessary junk. All the unnecessary people, all the unnecessary challenges that we'll hit if we walk on our road. So staying on God's path is just being obedient. Moving when the Holy Spirit says move. Wait when the Holy Spirit says wait. It's very easy, but it's not. <laughs> I say it sounds easy. Let me say it again. It sounds easy, but why is it so hard? Why is it so hard to stay on God's path? We know the answer. Because the devil is throwing curves at you all the time. The devil's throwing curves at you all the time. That's why it's so hard. The challenges are why the devil's trying to throw curves. He's trying to throw you off duty. He's trying to throw you off your path. He's trying everything he can to keep you off balance. That's why it's so hard. The reason the Bible says, I press toward the mark. You don't press unless you're pressing against something. The reason you press toward the mark is because something is trying to keep you from getting to the mark. That's why you're pressing. You're pressing through the devil's attempts to stop you. You're pressing through the lies. You're pressing through deception. You're pressing through seduction. You're pressing through confusion. You're pressing through all the things in this world trying to keep you from where God's trying to take you. That's why we press. And how do you press? How do you press? Keep praising. Keep praying. Stand still. How do you press? Keep praising. Keep praying. And keep standing still. Because in his presence, you get all the directions. In his presence, you hear all the directions you need for whatever it is you need to decide on. That's why before every decision, before every decision, take it to the Lord in prayer. 
before every decision, take it to the Lord in prayer and you'll get the answer. How to proceed, what to do, and when. That's why we must understand that. And see, when you we forget so often, amen, Liz, so often we forget that life is spiritual warfare. Let me say it again. We forget that life is spiritual warfare on earth. All the spirits, good and bad, all the spirits are on us, good or bad. What we're listening to, we seek God, we bring the good spirits. You seek the world, you bring all the bad spirits. So everything we see on the earth right now is spiritual warfare on earth. Spiritual warfare on earth is all the behaviors we, we see on the news. All the behaviors, murder, killing, shooting, lust, rape, crimes. That's the bad spirits on earth. All the good spirits on earth, people are praising. They keep their joy. They keep their peace. They walk in love. That's the good spirits on earth in people. So spiritual warfare has come to earth and we're looking at it through the behavior of people. We forget this. We forget about the sports. We forget about the spiritual warfare part. We think a person is just bad. How can that person be so bad? Look at that person. How can it be so bad? How can it be so evil? Well, if they listen to the devil, if they're listening to the devil, that's how can it be so evil? That's the answer. Don't 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 ask how can that person be so evil? If they're so evil, that tells you who they're following. The devil comes to what? The devil comes to steal, kill destroy if someone is acting out of line of god's word they're listening to the devil it's an easy answer we understand it don't say how and or why they're listening to the wrong person the wrong voice the wrong spirit and if you don't praise if you don't pray if you don't stand still you open the door for the, the world come in if you don't praise you don't pray and you don't stand still. You open the door for the world to come in and bring all those spirits into your life. Here comes confusion, worry, fear, stress, anxiety. All this stuff in the world comes on you because you disconnected from the Lord. Stay connected by what? Praise is connection. Prayer is connection. Standing still is connection. You read the Bible, you read you read the word, you read inspirational books. Whatever is feeding your spirit keeps you connected. Whatever is feeding your spirit keeps you connected. If you don't do anything in any way toward God, if you don't spend any time with God in any form, you're opening the door and inviting the devil to come into your life and disrupt it, destroy it. Confusion, worry takes over. You lost your peace, you lost your joy, you lost your hope, you lost your faith, you lose everything. Hey, very much blessed, welcome, very much blessed. So we understand Ephesians 6:10. We wrestle not in flesh, we wrestle not in flesh and blood. Ephesians 6:11. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's all spiritual warfare. And when you understand that. In spiritual warfare, you understand that you must rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Anything that's not of God, rebuke it in the name of Jesus. That's your authority. That's your authority. When you understand we're not dealing with people, we're dealing with spirits in the people. The person who knows how to steal your joy is on assignment. Woo. Let me say that again. At work, Family, whoever it is, when a person comes to steal your joy or your peace, they are on an assignment from the devil to steal your joy or your peace. See, see, we don't think about that stuff. We don't think about how come that person always makes me upset? How come that person always makes me mad? How come they just say good morning and upset because they got the wrong spirit? You feel the spirit in them. They just walk up to you and say hi, and you upset. <laughs> they say good morning, and you get mad. Why? It's the wrong spirit. They have the wrong spirit in them. And as soon as they get close to you, you feel it. You feel uneasy. 
you feel, oh, what's up? Something about this person. Something about this person I don't like. It's the spirit in them. Spirit, no spirit. Holy Spirit knows exactly what spirit that is. Either the Holy Spirit says, get away. Or the Holy Spirit says, pray for them. Now sometimes, now, don't pray for anyone that the Holy Spirit doesn't tell you to pray for. Let me make that clear. Don't pray for anyone that the Holy Spirit does not tell you to touch. See, a lot of times, sometimes we say, you know, I want to pray for that person. And you want to go and touch the person and pray for them. Don't pray over a person unless the Holy Spirit tells you so. You might not be ready for what's in them. Whoa! You might not be ready for what's in them. So don't, don't, don't think because you know scriptures, I'll go lay hands on that person. And the Holy Spirit didn't tell you to do that. Holy Spirit said, don't, don't do that. Pray for them right here in the car. But I want to lay hands, but I want, but I want to lay hands on them. Holy Spirit said, pray for them in the car. And you say, but I want to lay hands, I want to lay hands on them. You may not be ready for what's in them. You may not be ready for what's in them if you touch them. Because once you touch them, that spirit can jump on you. If you're not ready for it, do not go, do not go forward. If the Holy Spirit did not tell you to touch them, do not touch them. Pray for them from a distance. Otherwise, Holy Spirit says, go lay hands on that person. Okay, go lay hands on them. And then you back, the Holy Spirit is protecting you because the Holy Spirit knows what they need and the Holy Spirit knows you're ready for what they need. So now the Holy Spirit says, go lay hands on that person. That means the Holy Spirit's got your back. The Holy Spirit knows what's in them and you can handle it and then you go forth. And pray for the person. See, these are all examples of staying on your path. When you're being obedient to the Lord, you're staying on God's path for your life. Not just not just goals. This lesson is about being obedient. Staying on God's path for your life means being obedient to whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to do. Because all of that is God's path. Whatever you're doing in life, when you're listening to the Lord, you're staying on God's path. He's telling you what to do, who to pray for, when to pray. Sometimes in the middle of the night, wake up, pray. Wake up, 3 a.m., pray. Wake up, 6 o'clock, pray. Wake up, pray. <laughs> yeah. Don't say, well, who are we praying for, Holy Spirit? Who, who are we praying for? He didn't ask you the question. He said, wake up and pray. So just pray in the Spirit. You have no idea who you're praying for or what you're praying for. Sometimes you could be covering yourself. You could be covering your own household. He just says, wake up and pray. Start praying in the spirit. Whatever that prayer is, Holy Spirit says, pray. I start praying. I could be praying for myself, my family, my job, my loved ones. I have no idea. But when the Holy Spirit says, wake up and pray, wake up and pray. And don't worry about who is it for? What's happening? Where are they? Don't worry about that. Just be obedient. Wake up, pray. <laughs> Amen. See, and, and, and the three examples I had to give you in, uh, for reference on your own reading. If you, I want you, I want uh, John to write these scriptures down. I want you to read on your own time examples of God's path when they didn't really understand what it meant. Uh, Write down Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17 through 20 is about how God guided Abraham. Once God changed Abraham's name to Abram and told him he was going to be the father of many nations, he's telling, he's telling Abram all these things that are going to happen in his life. Now, of course, I'm sure it doesn't say what he said, but I'm sure that, I'm sure that, <laughs> that Abraham, uh, Abram, after but Abraham is Abram, once his name was changed to Abram, God gave him all these, all these assignments and tell him, I'm going to make you the father of many nations, but you have to change locations. I'm going to make you a father of many nations, but you have to change locations, which means you must leave your familiar, familiarity. You got to leave the people you know. I'm moving you to another location. 
and I'm going to make you the father of many nations. But that's going to happen at the new location, not where you are now. I need to move you somewhere else to make you a father of many nations. The Abraham, Abraham could have said, well, God, how come I got to move? I love these people. I know these people. How come, God? How come? Danger, danger, disobedience, danger. How come, God? How come? Now, it's okay to talk to the Lord when you don't understand. When you don't understand a direction from the Lord, it's okay to, to, to talk. Talk to the Lord. Speak to him. Well, Lord, I, I, Lord give me strength, Lord, because I, I don't know about these things. I, I don't know anyone there, Lord. So just give me strength, Lord. Give me strength to make this change. Give me strength to walk in obedience, Lord. So you can pray for this. When, you in, when you're walking into fear because of change, I did, I did an old lesson about this. We cannot fear change. We cannot fear change. So when change is about to happen in your life, don't fear it. Embrace it by giving it to the Lord. Embrace it by giving the change to the Lord. Because God is taking you there. God is getting, God is putting the change in your life. Don't fear it. Don't fear change. It's God's direction to take you to another place and the other place could be where your blessing is waiting. Just like Abram. My other example, my other example, uh, Noah, Noah and the ark. Look at uh, John of these scriptures. Uh, Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. 5 through 22 and chapter 7 1 through 5 Genesis chapter 6 5 through 22 and chapter 7 1 through 5 now I'm, I'm paraphrasing these are a lot of scriptures but on your own time I'm going to paraphrase it this is when God told Noah to build an ark now can you imagine he's building an ark he's building an ark on dry land and people laughing at him. Where you? Where's the? Where's the water? Where's water? What are you building up? What are you building this giant boat in the middle of a desert? What are you doing? Are you crazy? Now, what is he doing? He's being obedient. God told him to build an ark. He didn't say, "Well, well, Lord, uh, Lord, I don't see no water. Uh, Lord, how come I'm building a boat?" <laughs> now he could have thought that. Maybe he did think that, but what did, what did Noah do? He built the ark, and then the water came. They had no idea it was coming from the sky. They're looking around at the desert. There's no water around here. What's he building a boat for? There's no water around here. Why, why is he doing that? And, and Noah just kept building, kept building, and then the water came from the sky. <laughs> See, we don't, we don't know. We have no idea where God's going to come from next. He tells us, I'm going to come back. Jesus said, I'll be back. He said, I'll be back. We don't know when, where, how, but we know Jesus is coming back. So all we do, all we do is focus on what? Being obedient. I don't care when the rapture comes. I'm being obedient. I don't care what naysayers say. I'm being obedient. Haters, agnostics, all the naysayers, unbelievers, I'm going to be obedient. Because God told me to do this. Trust me with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge me and I will direct your path. That's, my, that's our obedience. It doesn't matter what the world says. All the unbelievers, all the people who don't understand why you love the Lord. Don't understand why you praise every day. Don't understand why you come to fellowship six days a week. Some people, don't, some people can't even understand why we meet six days a week. Some people, I, some people actually say, you guys meet six days a week. Six days a week. <laughs> One person was amazed when I said, I do fellowship six days a week. Six days a week? Six days. <laughs> it was almost like, they, it, it was almost like I said, I stand on my head six days a week. They looked at me like, it was almost like I said, I stand on my head six days a week. Six days a week? I just said, we praise God six days a week. We come together around the world and we praise God. We sing, we praise six days a week. 
<laughs> Woo! Oh, men, a little faith. Oh, men, a little faith. You wake up every day, don't you? That's six days a week. You eat day. You eat every day. Do you breathe every day? Do you do you walk every day? You have hands, feet, legs. Are you alive every day? And you worry about six days a week? He could take you out any second, and you worry about six days a week. Is you crazy? <laughs> Excuse my French. <laughs> Woo. Amen, Jackie. I need you, Jesus. We sing it every day. I need you, Jesus, all day long. That's seven days a week. Not six days. We need him every day, all seven days, every second of every day. We come to fellowship six days a week. But we really, we really need Jesus all seven days. We don't meet on Sunday, but remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. So we're really coming together in the Lord's presence seven days a week. Six days a week in fellowship and the seventh day with the Lord. So we're still seeking his face seven days a week. So people can't understand that. That tells you where to live. If people can't understand why you love the Lord and you praise God in fellowship or on your own, it doesn't matter in fellowship or on your own. If you love the Lord every day, even if not in fellowship, you're still praising. You're still praying. You're still standing still. It's a way of life. Live by the word is a way of life. What you do when you live something by when you live something living by the word, you're doing it every day. Living by something is every day. Live by the word. Feed every day. You eat every day. You exercise every day. Hopefully, you exercise every day. See, in order to make it every day, you feed your spirit every day. Because we're under attack every day. People don't think about it. People don't think about that. We are under attack every day. So you must feed your spirit every day in order to counter the attack. Let me say that again. If we are under attack every day, that means we must feed the spirit every day in order to be victorious over the attack every day. He's given us a victory. He's given us what? Total victory. He's given us total victory. He's given us total victory if you walk in it. He's given us total victory if you walk in it. The authority is for every day. The whole armor of God, every day. Psalm 91 protection, every day. Those, those, those are everyday things, not just once, once in a while. Not just when you read it. Psalm 91 protection, the whole arm of God, and your authority. You do those every day, not just every Sunday, every day. Staying on God's path every day. Staying on God's path every day. Sometimes it might be five minutes. You pray five minutes. One day you pray for an hour. It doesn't matter how long you pray. It matters that you connect to the Lord every day. It doesn't matter how long you pray every day. It matters that you connect to him every day. You connect to him every day. However, you might do a whole day one day. Another day might be five minutes getting ready for work. Another day might be in traffic. Another day might be at home. And you spend all day playing the six-hour prayer. It doesn't matter how much time. It matters that you take the time to connect. The important step is to connect every day. Because that connection is what protects you every day. That's why we got to walk in it. We sing it every week. Living by the word. Living by the word means walk in it every day. Walk in his word every day. Walk in his promises every day. Be obedient as best you can every day. Nobody's perfect. We're going to make mistakes. So, so shame the devil right now. We're going to make mistakes because we're, we're human. We are human. We make mistakes. Don't, convict, don't get convicted and feel guilty. If you make a mistake, Lord, please forgive me, Lord. Help me get, help me, help me be stronger, Lord. I, 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 Lord, I slipped today, Lord. Give me strength, Lord, to be stronger. See, don't let the devil come in. If you make a mistake and tell you, look at you, you're unworthy. Look at you, you're unworthy. Look at what you did. You're unworthy. Get thee behind me. Get thee behind me, Satan. Go way, way, go way, way, go way, way, devil. Go way, way by window. See. <laughs> 
The devil's only dangerous if you listen to him. Woo. The devil's only dangerous if you listen to him. The Holy Spirit just gave it to me. The devil is only dangerous if you listen to him. It's listening to the devil that makes you worried and fearful, anxiety, stress. You listen to the devil. If you listen to the devil, you lose your peace, your joy, and your faith, and your hope. The devil has no kind of hold on you. We see it. The devil has no kind of hold on me because Jesus Christ gave me what? Total victory through the through the anointing, through the, the authority, whole armor of God, sovereign protection. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. Out of my favorite saying, you can take that to the bank. <laughs> That's my favorite saying. And you can take that to the bank and cash it every day. <laughs> Woo. Help me somebody. Help me somebody. Thank you, Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Don't let the devil steal your joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Because your joy is your strength. When you praise, that's strength. When you worship, that's strength. When you dance for the Lord, that's strength. Don't let the devil steal your joy. You rebuke him by praising. Rebuke him by praying. Rebuke him by standing still. Resist the devil and what? Beep, beep. Pew! He will flee. Not, not walk away. He is fleeing. Fleeing means running away from you. The devil about to, the devil about to attack you. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> the devil is about to knock you down. He about to knock you down. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. He's gone. Because as soon as you pray, you praise, or you stand still, you're connecting, and the Lord's connection comes out of you and hits the devil. The devil is running from the connection. The devil is not running from you. Get it straight. The devil is not running from you. He's running from your connection to the Lord. That's why he's running. Because the next verse says, draw near to God and God draws near to you. That's James 4, 7, 8. James 4, 7, 8. Resist the devil and he will flee. Draw near to God and God draws near to you. That's why the devil's running, not from you. He's running from knowing that when you draw near to God, you pray, you praise, you worship, you're drawing near to God. And guess what? He's coming to you and the devil got to go. <laughs> the devil got to go because he's running from your connection. He's running from your anointing. He's running from the prayers and the anointing on you when you stand still and you connect. That's why he's running. When you understand that, when you understand that, you understand the power you have. When you say, in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Things above the earth, beneath the earth, on the earth, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. So when you say, in the name of Jesus, the devil got to go and all his minions got to go. Everything in the underworld got to go. When you say, in the name of Jesus, that's using your authority in Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you authority to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power, all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing means everything. Nothing shall by any means hurt you when you use your authority. We got to use your authority. Don't let the devil knock you down. Use your authority. Don't let the devil make you depressed. Use your authority. Don't get, don't get worried. Use your authority. Don't get stressed out. Use your authority. Use your authority whenever you feel the world attacking you. Whenever you feel overwhelmed. Whenever you feel negative spirits. Use your authority. That's why he gave it to us. That's why he gave us the authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And of course, my last example of staying on the path, <laughs> good old Jonah, the book of Jonah, just write, uh, John, write this down, uh, the book of Jonah, a next reading assignment. See these, we, I did a whole lesson, I've done a whole lesson on Jonah, but Jonah is a perfect example of going on his own path. So it's a, it's a very short chapter. So read the whole book of Jonah 
I, I, I'm giving you the assignments because uh, if for the sake of time, I'm giving you where the scriptures are. And I'll paraphrase the scripture and so you can go read it on your own time. We all know we all know Jonah's story. God told Jonah to go to Nineveh, the city of sin. God told Jonah to go to Nineveh, the city of sin. And instead of going, Jonah went the other way because he said, paraphrasing, Jonah said, that, that city is full of sin. I'm not going there. And he went the opposite way. God said, go to Nineveh. Now, when God said, go to Nineveh, he didn't tell him why. Notice, notice, when God said, go to Nineveh, he did not tell Jonah why. He said, go to Nineveh. And Jonah said, but that city is full of sin. That city is full of sin. Matter of fact, let's, let's turn to Jonah. I want to show you, I want to show you something right quick. Jonah chapter one, Jonah chapter one. Now, if you want to hear the whole lesson, I did an entire lesson. I did an entire lesson on Jonah, but I'm just, I'm just going through it briefly as this example for this lesson. But I want to show you what he said, because this whole lesson is about staying on God's path. Let's read Jonah, Jonah 1, 1 through 4. Jonah verses, Jonah is chapter 1, 1 through 4. Jonah chapter 1, 1 through 4. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Now, that's the assignment. Listen, that's the assignment. God said what? Verse 2, arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Verse 3, what did Jonah do? But, but Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So he went down to Joppa, found the ship, which was going to Tarsha, paid the fare, went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Look at that. Look at that. Both times he left the presence of the Lord. He disconnected. God said, go to Nineveh. He went the other way. He just said, he left the presence of the Lord. He left the presence of the Lord. When you're in disobedience, you're leaving the presence of the Lord. That means anything can knock you down in the world because you just left the presence of the Lord. When you're being obedient, you're under the presence. When you are disobedient, you leave the presence. He said it two times. First, he said it when he, when he said, no, I'm going the other way. I'm going to Tarshish. He said, he said verse, at the very first, top of verse 3, but Jonah rose up to flee from the presence of the Lord because the Lord told him one thing. He fled the other direction. He didn't want to do what God said. He wanted to go on his road because those people are filled with sin. And then what happened? We know the story. He got on the boat. The boat started being rough. A, a big a big wave started hitting. He's in disobedience. The waves are hitting. The waves are hitting because he's disobedient. The people on the boat said, what's going on? Even the people said, what's going on? And then Jonah knew it. Jonah knew it when the, when the other sailors said, what's going on? Jonah said, uh, it's me. Jonah knew he, he knew he was walking in disobedience. And he got tossed over the boat, out of the boat and swallowed by a big fish in the belly of the fish for three days to think about it. <laughs> he had three days to think about it in the belly of the fish. And then, and then once he got his head straight to be obedient, he got spit out and then he went to Nineveh. Now think about that. If he had done what God said the first time, how fast things would have happened. But no, no, he went the other way. I don't want to do that, God. You want to be Nineveh? I'm not going to Nineveh. I'm going my way. And he gets on a boat and ends up in a fish for three days. <laughs> smelling, smelling the fish's stomach acid. And he gets spit out when he finally got it straight. Now he's got his right mind. And now he goes and does what he's supposed to do. He, he does what God says do. And the entire city was saved because he did what God said. 
if he did the first time, the city could have been saved much sooner. But no, he wanted to go his way. He had to go his way first and get swallowed by a fish and smell belly acid and get the vomit, come up and vomit. <laughs> oh, sometimes so many people are hard headed. And excuse me, give me a thumbs up if you ever had to learn things the hard way. Shame the devil, tell the truth. Give me a thumbs up if you ever had to learn something the hard way. If you ever had to learn a lesson the hard way, give me a thumbs up right now because Jonah had to learn the hard way. See, God tells us to do something. If we do it, it's going to be easy. If God tells you to do something, it's going to be easy the first time. But no, no, we got to do it my way. I'm going to do it my way. And now it's delayed. It's delayed because you're walking in disobedience. When God tells you to do it, do it, and it's done. No, I don't want to do that. I can't do that. No, I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to do that. Excuse me. God knows it's hard. He's not going to leave you by himself. If God tells you to do something, he's not going to leave you by yourself. But sometimes, amen, Jackie, sometimes hard-headed and slow learners, hard-headed and slow learners, we don't want to do it because of flesh. The flesh does not want to do it. It's not you. It's your flesh. Hey, Nedra. Hey, sweetie. See, it's not us. It's the flesh. The flesh is a part of us that does not want to be obedient. The flesh is a part of us that does not want to be obedient. That's why we fast and pray. The reason we fast and pray is to tell the flesh the spirit is in control. The spirit is in obedience. The flesh is disobedience, but the spirit is obedience. We must feed the spirit to tell the flesh, no, I'm obeying God. I am obeying God. That's what the flesh is being told by the spirit. When you fast and pray, you are telling the spirit, the spirit is telling the flesh, excuse me, we are walking in obedience. I know I used to, I know, I know who I used to be. Yes, I used to listen to the flesh. Yes, I used to live in the flesh. But guess what? Now I'm a new man. And now I listen to the spirit. Now I walk by faith, not by sight. Now, behold, old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Now. Now. So see, whenever you feel weak in the flesh for any reason, for any reason, when you feel the flesh taking over, Fast and pray. You fast to do, to tell the flesh if whether it's, whether it's food, we talk about it every year. It could be food, social media, telephone, television, whatever your flesh is craving. Too much of, whenever your flesh is craving something too much, that's what you fast on. What you you reduce it to little or nothing. Too much TV, reduce it. Too much social media, reduce it. Too much time on telephone, reduce it. Whatever it is, too much food, reduce it. Whatever it is, the flesh is out of control. That's what you fast on. Because you're trying to tell the flesh, my spirit is under control. I am not giving in to physical cravings. I am obeying. I am in obedience. I am obeying the spirit. I walk by faith. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So you feed your spirit and you starve your flesh. Feed your faith. Starve it out. That's what it's all about. And all of this is staying on God's path. The lesson today. These are all examples. And, 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 and the reason later on in chapter 4... In, in chapter 3, the reason Jonah said he didn't want to go is because he said, well, I know that you probably, that's a city of sin, and I know you probably forgive them, and I couldn't go. See, jo Jonah was actually judging God. He said, well, I didn't go to Nineveh because I know you're a God of love, and you would probably forgive them. So I, they're a city of sin. I, they don't need to be forgiven. I knew you forgive them. That's why he didn't go. 
he was judging God's decision because he knows God is love and that God would probably forgive them if they repented. But he was so judgmental that Nineveh is a city of sin. He didn't even want to consider the city could be saved. That's when you judge somebody. That's being judgmental. When you look at somebody and you judge them, that they can't be saved. They're beyond hope. They're beyond saving. You're judging them. Is there anything too hard for God? God can change anyone. He can turn anybody's life around. So when you decide to be disobedient, because you think somebody is too bad to be saved, too bad to be to be prayed over, too bad to be this. You're being judgmental because you're saying they're not, they're not worth praying for. They're lost. They're evil. They're this. They're no good. I'm not praying for them. They're no good. You're being judgmental. Judge not. Yes, ye be judged. God is the only judge. God is the only judge. We don't judge people. We pray for people. We don't judge them. We pray for them. That keeps us right with God. When we pray, instead of judging someone, that keeps us right with God. Because God is the only judge. That's what we have to remember. We have to remember that. We must remember, it doesn't matter how much sin is around us. Pray for these people. We say it. We do it every day in a prayer. We pray for the world every day. We pray for healing, for peace, for justice, for change. We pray it every single day in my closing prayer after intercessory prayer. The reason I say it every day is because it's a big request. There's a lot of people walking in sin. A lot of people not following God. Not following God. So the reason we close prayer, intercessory prayer every day with that prayer for the world and the people walking on whatever it is, is because it's a major battle going on as we enter end times. The tribulation where it's going to be, be even worse than now. It's already bad right now. Tribulation, we're moving. I'm, I have no idea how close we are to it, so don't ask me. But we know that tribulation is going to be even harder times. So don't be shocked. Don't be fearful. Because we know it's coming. And we know what's happening. And because we know what's happening, that's why it's important to make sure we stay connected every day. Look not things are seen. Look not at things that are seen. Look not at things that are seen, but at things that are unseen. The things that are seen are temporary. Things that are unseen are eternal. 2 Corinthians 4.18 2 Corinthians 4.18 we don't look at things to see. Don't look at the world. We're looking at things unseen. We keep our mind stayed on him. We keep our mind stayed on him every day to protect your peace because we trust him. That's what we do every day. All these things we talk about, everything this lesson is talking about is every day to stay on God's path for your life you got to walk on his path every day. Be obedient every day. Seek his face every day. Connect to him every day. See, these, these are things we must do. God is not going to make us do it. God is not going to make us connect. He's given us everything. His presence is ready. His presence is waiting for us to stand still. As soon as you say, in the name of Jesus, his presence all over you. His presence everywhere. So whenever you stand still, he's there to, to talk to you, to comfort you, to give you strength, to answer prayers, to guide you and direct you and protect you. All these things is in his presence. And that's why it's so important to stand still every day, to give it to the Lord in prayer every day. Call his name every day. Authority every day. Praise every day. Fellowship or not. Worship every day. But we got to do this every day. If you remember nothing else I'm saying, we got to stay connected every day. That's the important part. To walk on God's path. 
for your life is to stay connected every day so you can hear the Holy Spirit every day who will guide you through your day, tell you everything you need to do. He will remind you of things get done. He will remind you when you get lazy. Have you ever noticed? Have you ever noticed when you get lazy? The Holy Spirit says, how come you're not up? How come you didn't finish that? The reason you recognize procrastination is because the Holy Spirit is telling you, how come you didn't finish that? Isn't there something you need to do? That's the Holy Spirit talking. That's how you understand procrastination. When you, when you know you're procrastinating, that means you heard the Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's proof. The reason you hear, the reason you feel and know procrastination is because you know what God just said. You Get that done. You haven't done it yet. Finish that book. Write that chapter. Read this. Go there. Whatever it is. You didn't do it yet. And now, man, I'm procrastinating. You know you're procrastinating because you know what the Holy Spirit said. So what do you do? I did a whole, I did a whole list about this. Procrastination. Do it when you think it. The key to procrastination. And I'm a witness. I'm a witness. As soon as you think it, do it. Victory. The victory over pr procrastination. As soon as you think it, do it. Don't wait. As soon, well, I'll do that. I'll do that later. Later never comes. As soon as you say, uh, I'll finish that later. Later comes two days, three way, three days, three weeks, three months, three years. Because you say, I'll do it later. You didn't even give it a time period. I'll do it later. And later is 10 years later. <laughs> At least say, at least say, I'll do that tomorrow. Give it a time. Don't just say later, because later could be 20 years from now. No, okay, if you can't do it now, okay, write it down. Write it down on your schedule. Holy Spirit says, do this. And you say, okay, oh, yeah. okay, oh, yeah. thank you, Holy Spirit. Write it down. Write it down. Make it plain. Write it down. Make it plain. And once you write it down, you see it. Once you write it down, make it plain, so those who read it, those who read it can run with it. Habakkuk, once you write it down, what the Holy Spirit said, once you write it down and you make it plain, you see it. Now, you remember what the Holy Spirit said, because you wrote it down and you see it. Now, two things to do. John and I do this. John and I both do this. When you have things to do, make a things to do list. Make a things to do list. And write that thing down on your list to do. If, if you say tomorrow, tomorrow, don't say later. Write down when you're going to do it. I'll do that this afternoon. Write it down. I'll do it tomorrow. Write it down. This weekend, whenever it is, write down when you're going to do it and stick to it. Write down when you're going to do it and then do it. Write it down. If you don't write it down, it'll leave your mind. If you don't write it down, it leaves your mind. And now 10 years later, man... I still haven't done that. <laughs> you got to write it down and to avoid procrastination. To, in order to avoid procrastination, write it down, make it plain so you can see it and run with it. When you say do it, now you can do it. Now you do it because you look at it. I wrote it down. I said, do this Saturday. Do it Saturday. I do it tomorrow. Do it tomorrow. When you write it down, when you say do it, do it on that date. You wrote it down, make it plain. Whatever you write down, do exactly what you wrote down. Commit to what you said for yourself. Commit to what you said for yourself. And next thing you know, victory over procrastination. That's the key to victory over procrastination. Amen, Jackie. A lot better than last year. <laughs> yeah. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, how many people? How many people have procrastinated? Give me a thumbs up. How many people have procrastinated? Come on. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. How many people have been procrastinating over something? If, if there's something you know needs to be done and you still haven't done it, you are procrastinating. If you know there's something you need to finish and you haven't done it, you are procrastinating. <laughs> John, oh my God, so much. <laughs> I mean, Amen. See, we got we to gotta tell the truth. We're, we're family. We're family. We tell the truth. Shame the devil and tell the truth. Yes, I procrastinate. 
Yes, Lord, help me fix it. Yes, Lord, help me be stronger. Help my focus, Lord. And, and pray for it. Pray for victory over procrastination. Pray for victory over procrastination. Lord, Lord, I need strength, Lord. Lord, give me give me supernatural remembrance, Lord, to get it done. Help my focus, Lord. Lord, bless my focus to do things when I say it. Help me be focused, Lord, to do things when you tell me to do it. Help me focus on be obedient, Lord. Help me focus, Lord. See, pray for it. When you know there's something you need to work on and you're weak, pray for the strength. If you don't, if you, if you have trouble focusing, pray for focus. If you have, if your mind keeps wandering, pray for strength to get it done. You can pray for this stuff. You can pray for this stuff. When you can't get it right, pray for the Lord to show you the way. Pray for the direction. Pray for victory over whatever it is that's trying to take you off your path. We're all talking about, we're still talking about staying on God's path. Procrastination is taking you off the path. God tells you to do something on the path and you don't do it. That means something on that path, on God's path, you didn't do that needs to be done to bless you. It needs to be done to bless you. It's on God's path. Everything on God's path leads to a blessing, a blessing of obedience. Everything on God's path is a blessing to obedience. When you obedience, the obedience is leading to a blessing. The obedience is leading to a blessing. So everything, everything you come against on God's path, be obedient because it leads to a blessing. He blesses obedience. He is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him in Hebrews 11, 6. Because when you're obedient, when you're obedient, you are applying Hebrews 11, 6. When you walk in obedience, you walk in obedience without faith. It is impossible to please God. And those who come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. When you walk in obedience, you're being obedient to the word. He is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. Obedience is seeking him. That's part of seeking the Lord. When you walk in obedience, that's part of seeking the Lord. Diligently. So I hope this lesson, I hope this lesson has been a blessing to let you understand how important it is to stay on God's path. I gave you the examples of Abram and Noah and Jonah. There are many other examples in the Bible of, of just being obedient to the Lord. He knows, he knows the plans he has for us. Trust it. We must trust God's plans for us. That's a part of Jeremiah 29, 11 to take home. God knows the plans he has for each one of us and the when and the how and the where. He knows the plans. Don't get caught up in trying to figure it out. Just trust the Lord. Know that God has the, he knows the plans he has for each one of us. Trust that. Trust it and stay connected. Trust the Lord, stay connected. That's the key. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this lesson today. Lord, we thank you for this lesson to come together, Lord. Just to understand how to stay on your path, Lord. Bless each fellowship member right now, Lord. To be able to stay on the path that you set for each one of us, Lord. Each one of us is on a path for you. That's the reason we're all here right now. Each person who can hear my voice is on a path that you've set, that you've laid before us, Lord. Help us be able to stay on that path, Lord. Give us strength, Lord, to stay on the path you've set for each person. The path that leads to blessings. The path that leads to victory. The past, the path that leads to breakthrough and deliverance. Give us supernatural strength, Lord. Give us supernatural strength to be able to rebuke every attempt by the devil 
to pull us off your path. That supernatural, that supernatural strength to keep us focused. To keep us connected every day. We thank you right now, Father God. Right now, we thank you in advance, Lord, for blessing every fellowship member to be able to walk in the victory over whatever path or ever challenges they have, they're facing, trying to pull them off their path, Lord. We thank you in advance for the victory taking place this day. We thank you in advance for the breakthrough and the healing and deliverance and provision and protection and healing taking place throughout the fellowship right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Before I close, as always, I always know someone's listening or watching our lesson who doesn't understand our praise and the worship, our fellowship, our love for the Lord. So right now, as I go into prayer salvation and the closing prayers, as always, please, no typing until after the prayer salvation and closing prayers. Anything typed during the closing prayers is deleted our respect a Holy Spirit. Amen. Right now, I'm talking to the person listening. You've been here the whole time. You've been listening or watching the entire lesson, the praise and the worship and the sermon. But you're not connected right now because right now your life is falling apart. Worry, fear, stress, anxiety is all over you. Families turned away from you. Friends stab you in the back and you may even feel like there's no reason to go on living right now yet somehow you find yourself on this channel have no idea how you got here and that's because god brought you here that's why you're here you may be here as a backslider in guilt for whatever reason you chose to leave god and go back into a life of sin and now the devil is telling you, once you fail God or leave God, you would never go back. And that is a lie in the pit of hell. No one is perfect. All have fallen short. So if you said the prayer of salvation and you fell back into a life of sin, there's nothing the devil can do to take away your salvation. Just rededicate your life to Christ. Recommit. And there's nothing the devil can do to stop you. So when you're walking as a backslider in guilt, you want to come back to the Lord? Are you walking in overwhelm and negativity and depression? Pray with me right now. Repeat after me. Father God, forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. And I commit right now, I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without lifting up to you first. Create in me, O oh Lord, a clean heart and remove from me anything and everything that's not like you in Jesus' name. And if you said that prayer sincerely, your spirit is not right to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of us, that teaches us, that guide us, and also convict us when you're not walking God's will. The Holy Spirit will show you people, activities, and things you're doing right now in your life, which is bringing darkness into your life. And then he'll tell you exactly what you need to do to reverse it. First of all, spend time with God every day. Feed your spirit, starve your flesh. Feed your faith, starve your doubt every day. And the more time you spend with God every day, the more peace of mind you'll feel in your life, which is God letting you know it's going to be all right. God's got this. 
God's got you. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship rebuke and bind the spiritual retribution, the revenge, retaliation, the backlash, and every other demonic spirit, named and unnamed, seen and unseen, who may try to attack anyone in this fellowship because of their participation in this fellowship. And we cast all you demonic spirits out of our mind, out of our spirit, out of our home, out of our kids, out of our marriages, back to the pit of hell for which you all came in Jesus' name. And Father God, loose, Lord, loose into the fellowship, unspeakable joy, loose peace beyond understanding, loose restoration, Lord, restore every area of our life, loose reconciliation, Lord, bring reconciliation to marriages and families right now who are falling apart because of the devil's attack, Lord. And Lord, please keep a hedge of protection over all the families and marriages who are not falling apart. But who the devil is still attacking every day. Loose supernatural healing, physical healing, spiritual healing, emotional healing. By your stripes, we were healed, Lord. And every day we confess it, Lord. We confess it every day. Thank you, Jesus. I believe I receive my healing. Thank you, Jesus. I believe I receive my healing every day. Thank him. Confess it. See it. Believe it. Breathe it. Expect it. Pray as if your life depends on it. P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. Loose. Supernatural overflow. Financial breakthrough. Supernatural debt cancellation. Lord, let your blessings, Lord, your blessings of abundance rain down, Lord. Rain down on the fellowship of every financial need right now, whatever it is. For you should supply all our need according to your riches in glory through Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want anything when the Lord is my shepherd. For we're the head, not the tail. We're above and not beneath. We're the lender and not the borrower. We're blessed going in and blessed going out. We're blessed that we may be a blessing to others. We are out of debt. All of our needs are met. We have plenty more to put in store. We are children of God and nothing shall by any means hurt us or block our blessings in any way. And finally, Lord, we thank you for a miracle, Lord. Each person here has a miracle they're praying for right now. And now we know to thank you. Every day, Lord, we take the time to see it and visualize it. See your miracle every day. See it, believe it, and receive it in your heart. And once you receive in your heart, expect it. Expect your miracle every day. We don't know the when. We'll never know the exact when. But because we don't know when, that means any day you wake up could be the day of the manifestation of the miracle you're praying for right now. May the Lord bless you and keep your family. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord let his countenance when you give you peace. That you may be a blessing to everyone you touch or speak to. A blessing to everyone you pray over. A blessing to everyone you pass by and bless. Without opening your mouth because the love and light of the Lord is all over you. 24-7, 365, including leap year. So Father God, all these things we ask, Lord. All these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Let fellowship say amen. Amen. Amen.